There's a reason why when you buy like a legit greenhouse that it's $5,000. There's a reason. When you're buying something for 30 bucks, you just, just know that you're gonna get what you pay for. But that doesn't mean with a little bit of modifications. Well, good morning, gardeners. I hope everybody's having a fantastic day. I know that in previous videos released, you've probably seen this behind me. And I wanna talk about it. I wanna talk about like, why they're not as great as they're thought to be, but there are actual uses for them. And there's kind of a little bit of a sad story behind this one, but we're gonna crack this nut open and I'm gonna kind of compare this to this and my greenhouse over here. So we'll see the differences and how we can use them both to our advantage. So I do wanna just go ahead and say that this is gonna have a lot to do with my son because this is actually my son's greenhouse. But I, before we get into that real quick, I just wanna show you my son's potato bed is growing. So there you go. He started a little bit after mine and we have potatoes growing in it. This something, his potatoes are growing faster than mine. It's not fair. So we actually have a little wager. I don't wanna call it a bet because you know, he's only nine years old, not even nine yet. But uh, we're, we have a wager to see who can grow the most potatoes. So. So far, it's not looking good for me, but whatever. We'll see when we cross the finish line. But this thing right here, I've seen everybody has one of these. Everybody. Um, it's just a basic green greenhouse. It's definitely green. And you put plants in it, right? And so it's got shelves in it, and we'll open it up and go into it as well. But I want to take you over here, and I want to just show you. I know you guys have seen my greenhouse a lot. And I get comments sometimes of like, oh, it's so nice that you're growing, you have a greenhouse, but like some of us aren't lucky enough to have one. And while that may be true, there's actually not a lot of differences between the two. There are a few, but there's not a lot. The freshly emptied greenhouse, let's just go over it real quick. It's polycarbonate. It's got a door. It's got some weather stripping on it and I've added some to it. Uh, it's got a definite window for vent. So there's that. And then there's just more space in here, okay? So there's definitely this aspect of it. There's the ability to add shelves and mod this thing out the way you want to. But when it really comes down to it, it's, a, it's meant to be a greenhouse, right? And I've stated this many, many times, and I'm gonna state it again. This is a glorified cold frame. So it doesn't retain its heat very well in the winter time at night when the weather when the sun goes down because of the polycarbonate and the air leaks in it and stuff it'll definitely release the heat and so we want to trap as much heat in there as possible and then we have ways of heating it using passive solar heating stuff like that radiant heating and all that now if we come over here to the other one this one it has a door but it is much more difficult to use. But let's open it up and see what's going on in here. Look at that, the zipper's already jacked up. This is the first time we've opened the zipper. And so I can feel instantly how hot it is in here. And so like my greenhouse will automatically vent in the daytime and this one will not. So you have to come out here and open the door. So that's a definite downfall because the problem is you can get things to cook inside of this greenhouse. Once you open it up, this one's a little bit bigger. I had one before that was basically just this size and it's got the shelves in it and it's got the the covering so it you know it brings the heat in during the day traps it keeps it nice and warm and there's stakes on the bottom to stake it down so here's my first issue my first issue is we put it up and we put it up in a different spot the next day it had blown across the yard okay we had maybe 20 mile an hour winds nothing crazy um the actual greenhouse that we have which i'm just going to refer to that even though i call it a glorified cold frame the greenhouse we have, like, it's not going to blow away. It's, you know, it weighs, the greenhouse by itself weighs 85 pounds, and then we put 400 pounds of wood on the bottom of it and attached it to that. 
So you've got about 500 pounds of material holding it down to the ground. So there's kind of one difference right there. Like that one's not really gonna blow away, but this one is. So it's, it's a little, little bit tricky, but my son got it for Christmas. And so he's been really excited for it. He wants to grow in it, you know, you know how most kids are, they either wanna be like their mommy or daddy. And he really wants to grow in this greenhouse. And I keep telling him like, now's not the time. Now's not the time. Because the situation is this greenhouse warms up really fast. So you basically have to come out, open it up immediately. And then it cools off at night really, really fast. Now we can mitigate that and we're going to today, or I'm going to set it up because I'm actually going to have him do it because I want him to learn, but we'll set it up kind of for him. And the problem is, is not only that, but the moisture inside will condense on the walls. And then that moisture inside will actually bring the temperature lower than outside at night. So moisture will kind of cool on the plants and stuff like that, just like outside, but then it kind of magnified because it's in this small space. So, you know, I asked him, I said, what do you want to grow in this greenhouse? And he goes, I want to grow a watermelon. Like we can't grow a watermelon in here, you know? And I know that a lot of this is he's young and he doesn't really understand like watermelons can get super big and all that stuff. But at the same time, like he wanted to plant it in February. We can't do that. But when you think greenhouse, you think, oh, this is going to be massive. In this greenhouse, we've got two water tanks here filled up with water and they're sealed and they, were, they soak in the heat during the day and they radiate it out at night. And this has been a really good method for this one. Um, each one of these is 15 gallons. So we have 30 gallons of water in this six by eight area. And it keeps the temperature in here about five degrees warmer at night. So we are able to comfortably grow throughout the winter. Now we do have other issues about sunlight and stuff like that, but that's neither here nor there. We're just talking about like stuff we can control, like temperature, mostly temperature. So what we're going to do is the same thing in his, but we're going to use these two buckets. And so I'm going to get him to fill these up, but we're going to throw some tops on them as well. So they don't release the water back into the structure and this will retain the heat. Now I'm looking at it right now as I walk up to it and we'll see in a second if it's even going to fit where I want it but it'll retain the heat and then same thing, it'll release it at night in this smaller area. So barely. So my plan is to put one under each shelf. And I would think that 10 gallons of water in here is actually gonna do a fairly good job. Now remember, this is the time of year right now for the next 10 days, it's not supposed to get below 45 degrees at night. So we can use this to our advantage right now. So, you know, tomorrow actually, we're not gonna do anything to it today because tomorrow's supposed to have 45 mile an hour winds and we'll see how well it stays down. I'm gonna try and anchor it down a little bit better. I have to look around. I don't see any tie down straps on it. So we'll have to make something or do something about that. But just by doing this, we are gonna be able to use it. Now, this time of year, a lot of people that I see, they wanna use these structures as ways to basically like a greenhouse, growing tomatoes when they're not supposed to, growing peppers when they're not supposed to grow, watermelons, squashes, all that stuff. And that's not really the right way to do it. But at this time of year when we're already staying below temp or above freezing and really well above freezing, we're in the process of hardening off a lot of plants. And this could be a really good way to do it. So we're gonna take our heat loving plants. We'll do stuff like this tray of squash here. And I've got three more trays just like it inside the house. As soon as they get going, these, the okra over here, and maybe even the tomatoes, like all of these will be fine to go in there right now. And that's gonna help them stay a little bit warmer at night free up the space in my house, get natural sunlight so we can get really, really strong growth on it. I feel like this is a really good way to utilize this structure into, you know, giving it the proper use. I know that they advertise it as growing flowers in it year round and stuff like that, but in some areas it just doesn't work that way. And we need to understand that when we are trying to do structures and stuff like that, like 
there's a reason why when you buy like a legit greenhouse that it's five thousand dollars there's a reason when you're buying something for 30 bucks you just just know that you're going to get what you pay for but that doesn't mean with a little bit of modifications just like basically putting some buckets of water in there you can start to change the narrative on these structures and actually get better use out of them so i mean if you look at it like this like i've been talking for a couple weeks about these flowers that i started in my greenhouse and i wanted to see how they would grow and when we come in here you can see they're all growing fine they've gotten nice and cool um but for the most part especially these asylums i wasn't too sure about they're growing just fine they look nice and strong they're, they started their life with sunlight i can transplant them at any time i want i can move them out so this is a really good reason to use something like that out there now i do i did i mean if you look in here alone the amount of modifications i've done is crazy i added a solar fan i weather sealed the door i weather sealed the window to hold more heat in i went around and caulked all the way around the base all the way around everything where it was connected to the wood to hold in that heat in the day because I saw that it was, you know, I could come out here and feel the heat releasing from underneath. So we went ahead and caulked the whole thing all the way around. I come out here every morning, especially this time of year, and open the door on top of this automatically opening. So, you know, you're doing all of these things to kind of keep it up and running and modifying it to make it better than it was and you can do the same thing to an extent with those you're just really limited thought i heard some running water over there so it's like please don't just put you know a plant that has no business being outside right now and try and get it to grow in one of those i think the way to really successfully use it is to put something out there that could maybe go outside and then you have to be very diligent and stay on top of it, but then going through and adding these different modifications and putting these plants in there that can already basically make it on their own and you're just trying to provide a little bit happier of an environment, I think that's the way to go for these things. Now, and this, since I've started recording this video, not much time has lapsed. And when I opened it, I could feel the heat. I wanna see in just this little amount of time, just I'm only gonna buy coolness like feel i'm not going to go by an actual thermometer but it is actually cooler in here right now now the sun is behind the cloud and i can still feel extra heat but some of these plants are going to be able to use this heat better so um, i mean look at this just by putting my hand on it how it flexes so you know weight you can't put a whole lot of weight in it and stuff like that if you put a whole lot of weight on top, it's going to make it real top heavy. So you've got to kind of weight it from the bottom and work your way up on these. So the question is, is this trash just a waste of time and money? And I'm going to say no with an asterisk. If you make the adjustments needed, I think you're going to be okay. And you just have the proper expectations out of it. This is not by any means a, a, a permanent structure. You know, I think that taking this and comparing it to that has been a very eye-opening experience for me and really thinking about like well what is the difference between them why are they similar or not similar it's been real eye-opening now would i prefer to buy a bigger one of those versus this structure absolutely not absolutely not this greenhouse right here was substantially more i think i paid about seven to eight hundred dollars before inflation on it and i've grown food in it for three winters now i think this is my third winter growing in it and it's been steady and fine and holding so i would not change that in any way but for something like the the green structure here i would definitely i would not put anything important into it and that's just my stance on it. I know there's a lot of people out there that disagree with me and use it and they may love it. But once you start using other structures or building a simple cold frame, we've got videos about that on the channel, building a simple cold frame, you can really get the same results, if not better, out of a cheap $20, $30 cold frame. 
No, I think when this one was purchased, it was on sale and it was like 15 bucks. So, I mean, they're basically giving them away. And I think it's a great entry point into some kind of like winter structure or something like that to get you started to say like, hey, this is something I really like. Let me move forward. Let me, I want to get a greenhouse. I want to start doing low tunnels and stuff like that. I think it is a very good point for that. And just know that like, it's not going to last forever. Goodbye.